Hey everyone, this is S. M. Pratt, and today we're going to talk about bubbles. This isn't the first time, and it definitely won't be the last time we talk about bubbles. It's been happening since the beginning of the hobby. If we go back to 1999, we had the fad bubble, then the social media bubble, then the gold star bubble, then the Pokemon Go bubble, then the Detective Pikachu bubble, then the is Justin Bieber in the hobby, is he going to buy all the booster boxes bubble? It's a term that gets thrown around pretty loosely whenever there's an increase in price. So what we're going to do today is try and figure out what's really going on, look at some data, and try to really address that question. Are we in a bubble? Try to figure out what's happening. I think a good starting point is that retail sales are up across the board, not just collectibles. It's why your Amazon orders are taking so long. Amazon's trying to hire as many people as they can. Basically, you have everyone at home right now that would naturally shop at the stores that are closed locally. So it's all funneled into online sales. If that's not enough for you. eBay putting out an email, top 10 entertainment items selling right now. Pokemon cards were number eight with a 90% growth. Sorry, other hobbies, you didn't make the list. Pokemon did. But the number one item, I think, was something like puzzles, some boomer boomer thing. But again, it makes sense because everybody's at home. They're looking for entertainment. And there you go. There is your data. So now that we have that information, the facts, the more difficult part, I guess, the more nuanced part is how do you interpret that data? So a lot of people are saying, are we in a bubble? And let's really look at that. Let's really pick that apart. So the actual bubble that happened in 2008, okay, a discernible bubble, textbook bubble with the housing crisis. There are three main variables there that don't really exist right now in collectibles. Number one, you had a long term of speculative spending. You had a lot of people who had no idea, who had barely any investment experience, minimal financial literacy, who were buying homes for investment purposes. And this happened well over a decade. It wasn't just one month or one quarter, you know, like in Pokemon or, or collectibles. This was years on years on years. So it was a compounded speculative spending to a point where it was a strong minority, if slight majority. Number two, you can build homes, can't build collectibles. I can't just build base boxes. I can't just build more trophy cards, but you could build homes and they did. I remember subdivisions that just sprung out of the ground. You had homes in there that sold four to six times in two years. They, nobody was even living in them. They weren't even used as utility of a home anymore. So therefore you had speculative spending over a long period plus items that could be produced. And lastly, these two things were bought and sold and traded and flipped and mixed and everything into funds, synthetic CDOs. I don't know how that can happen in collectibles. Some people have tried to do the whole fractional share thing. It never really sticks. You know, people have tried it with like PG Illustrator, Charizard, Black Lotus, you know, the big, big items. And it never really works because at the end of the day, when you're spending, especially like $10,000, you probably just want to buy like one item and appreciate it and own an actual piece of history. So therefore, these three variables that were necessary for the housing bubble don't exist in collectibles. You know, even if you want to say speculative spending is here, sure, let's let's agree on that and say that that first variable is true. You still don't have the timeline and you certainly don't have the majority. Majority of the people right now buying are not spending speculatively. And the easiest way to isolate that is these cards are being taken off the market aren't coming back on. And if they are, it's usually at a higher price. You know, I've sold some items recently and I see them get flipped and they sell again. So all that means is I didn't hit the you know market value, whatever someone's willing to pay at that point. So therefore you aren't seeing this quick flip downward motion. And also with that said, a lot of people forget that we're only looking here at like the high octane items, like, you know, these Watsy cards or maybe trophies or boxes and things like that. Majority of cards in this hobby are not exploding. You know, energy cards, comments, uncommons, evolutions, booster boxes. That's always a fan favorite. That thing has been the same price for four years, same exact price. Now, I think in my opinion, what would make what would make me jump on the bubble bandwagon is if you had those items have a massive uptake. Like if you told me Evolutions boxes tomorrow were $1,000, I'd be like, okay, that's interesting because these items have sat for four years with no movement and they're still being released in current product today. So that would be surprising. I think that would be more analogous to the home situation where you have an item that is more common, uh, even in the case of Evolutions and especially in the case of like, you know, older sets, those are going to be more limited compared to homes, but that would be more, in my opinion, of the canary in the coal mine. Items like, you know, these Watsy cards and everything else, they've been increasing this whole time. I think why you see more of a short-term uptick is, again, because you have more concentration in the short-term compounded with people can't really get cards processed through PSA. I know recently they opened the doors, 
But, you know, even if you can get those cards out the door day to PSA, you're still going to take months for that stuff to hit the market. And it's not going to hit the market all at once. Where right now, we have a ton of focused spending hitting the market all at once. So that's why you're seeing what we're seeing. So with that said, would I be surprised if there's a retrace on certain cards? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. There probably will be a retrace on certain cards because that happens all the time. You know, their cards are moving like this all the time. It's the long term and the big Big picture everybody wants to see. They just want one image. They don't want to hear this guy talking all this much. They want to hear one image and that's it. And that's what people look at is this way and this way. But in reality, cards simply move like this. It's only the rare, more exceptional, more difficult to acquire items that pretty much have a consistent upward motion. So yeah, I could expect to see some retraces on certain items. You know, no one really knows. Even Warren Buffett can't tell you. And that's the beauty of markets in the days that they will self-regulate. Let's go back to 2016, one of the previous claim Pokemon Go bubble. There was a smaller market then, so you had a smaller availability, huge uptick in exposure, people getting back into the market, re-entrance. You had an uptick in price, and then because of that, there was incentive to say, whoa, you know, the guy who bought this box at $1,000 and now it's five, I'm going to sell that because I got a couple of them. I'm just going to sell it because that's, that's enough of an increase. And then you start to see a downtick because you had an increase in supply. And then what happened? movement upwards. Why? Because that supply at the end of the day is limited. Now, you might have that cyclical process. Maybe that person bought five, maybe they'll sell 10. Maybe that person at 10 will sell 15. Who knows? Markets are dynamic. People are dynamic. They're not all me in a grandma's house talking to you. There's a variety of buyers, and that's why markets self-regulate. So we've talked about before with recession scenarios, bubbles, and things like that. There are definitely items I got my eye on that I think are going to be the worst offenders during a recession. But in general, I don't think overall these cards that are exceptionally hard to grade, exceptionally hard to find, and that are in boxes that have done nothing but go up, I don't really see that having a huge reverse to them. Entropy is a hell of a thing, especially when boxes, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because boxes have gone up since I've made this channel. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, boxes going up. But a card goes up, everyone freaks out. I don't understand that. I don't understand that the packaging that the card's in is fine. But when you take it out of the packaging, <laughs> it's Black Hawk down. So that's where we are, is that these boxes, like a Neo Gen box, for example, just sold for $14,000 with Heritage. Neo Genesis first edition box. So what do you got there? 12 hollows in that box? Let's do 14 just to make it easy math. Even though that's not what you're going to get. That's 1000 per card that you would need to sell to just break even. And we all know that you need to grade all 10s to do that. And Neo Genesis has more print lines then I don't even know, then etch a sketch. Like that thing is crazy for print lines. So therefore, it's really hard to recoup that money, you know, breaking that open. So now there's not, not much of an incentive to break that product, sell the cards individually. So that also is drying up supply. Now, there are those big ballers out there who take that risk and they don't care. They're like, yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna open these packs and see what happens. And, you know, again, this is why markets self-regulate is because you always have things in motion. You know, there's always people in motion. And it's so massive now that it's bigger than any individual. It's bigger than me, plus Gary, plus Leon Hart, plus Gary V. It's bigger than all that. You know, there's so many people out there now. So that's why you have this increase. Again, so many people buying. And one other thing I want to talk about is that, you know, we're talking about speculative spending. I don't, I don't buy that cynicism because of my exposure. And what I mean by that is my exposure, not only my sales, but like the people I talk to in Patreon, the calls I do, the businesses I'm close with, you know, I get a lot of data from a lot of places and I see where these cards go. And I think it's hard for people who are stuck in their little corner, like with their Instagram buddies, you know, like they see a card increase. So like, well, us five wouldn't pay that. So something's gotta be wrong, right? 90% of my cards just disappear that I sell. They go into collections. Same for Troll and Toad. These places are doing a hundred orders a day a day man it's like they're doing like hundreds of thousands of orders a year it's crazy and majority of those cards they just disappear in the collections so that's why i don't buy the speculative spending argument even if there is speculative spending i think the wave or the the amount of actual collectors out there is just too strong you know and that's why at the end of the day if there is some type of recession scenario you're going to see inflection points it doesn't make sense if someone bought a card at pick your price hundred dollars thousand dollars ten thousand dollars for them to sell at half value if they don't need to and that's what a flexion, an inflection point is at the end of the day. You know, we're talking about items that are sentimental to us. This isn't a stock. You know, this isn't something that, and more specifically, it's not a stock you can just keep splitting and offering more shares. You can't do that. You know, when I sell like a Charizard first edition base, especially in high grade, I'm probably not going to get another one unless I want to pay a high price. So 
that's what you're looking at again for the high octane stuff for the middle of the road items with like thousands of thousands of quantity yeah i'm sure there will be more available i'm sure there'll be some retraces on some of this but again nobody can tell you nobody can know for sure uh the only thing i would tell you is there's more money in the markets that's not going to change uh even for those true the like 100 percent cynics out there who think that only the pure collectors were around and the arbitrary line they draw in the sand like Everyone after 2016 isn't a true collector. You know, draw your arbitrary line in the sand. Let's take it all the way back to like 2008 and say that the thousand people that were there in 2008, are, that's it. Those are the only people in the hobby. Guess what? Their consumer income still increases. I could spend way more today than I could in 2008. Way more. So therefore, that money is still in the market, even if you want to make these arbitrary reductions of we'll take people out of the market until this time. Those same people still have increased consumer income. I guarantee whoever's watching this, if you were like 16 years old in 2008 and now you know, you're know you in your 20s, you're probably making more money now, like in 20s or 30s, than you were when you were 16. You know, this is, this is just a natural macro trend. So those are the variables at play. Again, nobody knows for sure. Some cards will probably hold their value. Some might come down. Uh, this is why I love watching markets. And to give you my honest opinion, I really don't care where prices are gonna go. That's genuinely what I think all the time. I'm just gonna to adapt to the patterns in front of me. I've been doing it for 15 years. I know all the little trends or I try to do my best to analyze all the trends and I'll just adapt to whatever's happening. I think it's the people who see markets as this massive like, or they see the world as if it's some type of like pie in the sky conspiracy. And you know, I just don't see the data behind it. I'd love to hear you know the data, but I just don't see it. The data disagrees and you know, my experience disagrees as well. I'd love for things to go back to 2009 prices, 2008 prices. That'd be fantastic. I could buy like every single copy of every illustrator ever, but you know, that's not realistic. So that's what I have right now, guys, for the bubble talk. Um, I don't actually think it's a bubble. I think there is, as mentioned, there's a concentration of online spending. There might be a temporary spike on certain cards, absolutely. Uh, but no one can really tell you which ones are going to go down and go up, down, all around. Only time can tell. Uh, but bubbles too much to throw the baby out of the bathwater. I don't like it. And again, when you highlight an actual bubble like the housing market, we don't have those variables. And those are long standing variables. Again, remember, speculative spending for majority of the market for like a decade plus. We don't have that. And it, even if we do, we're, our market cap is so low. You're talking like real estate was like a trillion dollar. It is a trillion dollar industry, multiple trillion dollar industry. I mean, Pokemon's what? Like maybe billions, maybe? <laughs> like, you know, like half a million was the market cap for like the past month just on ebay so it's not really there you know you'd really have to uptick those numbers especially on like common energy and things like that for me to really you know marry that bubble idea so that's what i have guys let me know what you think let me know what you feel you know the deal till next time